Welcome to another edition of our online entrepreneurship initiative. This is the Human Resources Module. I'm Leroy Kumalo and I'm your host. Before we get started, let us remind ourselves of our ground rules. We'll be given an opportunity um, to ask any questions at the end of each and every session. During so, please wait for others to finish speaking before you speak when you're given the opportunity to do so. Each time when you speak, please state your name so that we begin to recognize your voice. Please let us try to be on time for each and every session so that we get time to prepare and set up on time. Let us participate when we're given an opportunity to participate, bring up any challenges and successes of any uh, that we have in our business. Do not forget to upload any expectations that you have out of the course. Please, if you can do so via our online poll. This is the Human Resources Module. In this course, we're going to discuss what is human resource management, staffing, compensation and benefits, training and development, and legislative compliance. For now, we're going to start with two uh, sections which discusses about the human resource management as well as staffing. To get started, introduction to human resource management. By the end of this course, we want to describe the organizational human resource process. We want to have an understanding of the process of recruiting, the process of performance appraisal and compensation, and procedures that are available in job design and evaluation. Before we get started, please test your knowledge regarding human resource management. How's your level of understanding with regards to human resource policies and their importance in business or for your company? Your level of, of understanding of human resource policies, the process of recruiting, understanding proper compensation relative to staff performance, as well as the process of training of staff members. Let's get started. Understanding the human resource management. This is the strategic approach to the effective and effective management of people in your company. This is the management, the proper management and effective management of anyone who works for you as the business owner. It is designed to maximize employees that are in your service in order to meet the objectives and the goals of the company. While well, other aspects can include conducting job analysis, determining each employee's nature of job, planning for company labor needs, recruiting needed staff, staff orientation, training of new and also training of existing staff, and managing of wages and um, appraising performance of staff members. These are the duties of the human resource management. Now, let's unpack the functions of human, of human resource HR. The, the, the HR management has the following functions, to plan, organize, direct, and control. They have the responsibility to assess the business needs properly, plan for, human, uh, for, for the any human, uh, needed human capital for the company, and how to maintain the current uh, staff that's currently in the, in the company. Let us explain in detail the functions of the human resource management. The first one, planning. Effective management, they realize that the need to devote substantial amount of time in assessing and planning company needs. This gives the company an idea of which direction it should take and if the direction that the company is taking is according to the goals of the company. This also can include determining the advanced company needs in view of any projects that the company might secure. Take for example, you are planning to plant or utilize the wall of your hundred or 50 or 100 hectares of your land. Think of the existing uh, staff members. Do you think the business has to increase the staff in order to meet the goals? Does the business have to decrease the number of staff because there's just too many 
but the work is not much. This is where planning comes in. Then organizing. Once the HR manager or the business owner as this function is mostly done by the business owners in most small businesses, you as the business owner and the HR manager, you perform the human resource function. You realize that human capital is required in order to meet the objective of the company. This is when we realize that proper design of organizational structure is in line with the human capital required. In this instance, if you as the business owner perform the human resource function, you can outsource expertise on how to properly organize the company structure in view of the needed human capital. Perhaps you don't have much expertise on how to distribute the work in line with the uh, uh, expected uh, project that the, uh, that the firm has. This is when you can organize or outsource uh, uh, skills in order for someone to do this for you on your behalf. Directing. Once planning and organization has been performed, the organization is now ready to execute the plan. In small businesses, business owners handle this um, HR function as stated. As the business owner, you provide direction with regards to job titles. What is expected from myself as your employee? The job functions are clearly outlined and work is delegated according to the skills of each and every employee. We are going to touch more uh, later on the HR regarding the training and recruitment, but we want to just highlight here on directing. This is where upon delegating the work, you know my skills, you know the skills of your employees. Upon employing them, you understand what they do uh, are best at. And over the years of working with them, you understand what they do uh, or work uh, best at. Hence, you delegate the work according to the skills of your employees. At the end, controlling. This is a managerial function in line with regulating activities in accordance with the personal plan. Control is formulated based on an analysis on how to meet the organizational goals. Now, controlling is done of staff members. As the business owner or the HR manager, you control the human capital of the company. That it ensures that they understand what they need to do at any given time. These are the basic functions of the HR manager. These are not just the function of a person called an HR manager in any company, but these are the functions which you as the business owner, you have to undertake in your business with regards to the human resource function of your business. Now, we have certain um, statutory bodies which are involved in ensuring that our business operations are in line with the Zimbabwean legal framework. Understanding the importance of the National Employment Council. The National Employment Council plays a vital role and they are involved in the human resource management. Their policies actually are involved in the human resource management. They strive to advance social justice and democracy at workplace by providing a legal framework within which employees and employers can bargain collectively for the employment or conditions of, empl uh, of employment of, or improvement of conditions of employment. They also give uh, effect to fair labor standards and the fundamental rights of employers and employees. All these are stated by the National Employment Council. I, as the employee, have to know my legal standards as set by the National Employment Council. They assist to resolve labor relations disputes effectively and educate stakeholders on key labor matters. Now, do we, are we compliant with the National Employment Council? Do we understand the policies and do we let our employees understand their rights in the business and what they can and cannot do 
with regards to the legal framework of the employees. Let's think about this. Do you take into consideration the guideline of the NSC with regards to the minimum ledger, uh, labor wages for the general agricultural sector in Zimbabwe? How do you set your the rate of your employees of whatever you pay your employees at the end of the month? Do you take into consideration the guideline that set with regards to the minimum rate of labor wages? Please take this into consideration as stated as well in your manual that you have. According to the Labor Law of Zimbabwe, you need should, you have to your business should be registered with the NSC for Agriculture, as it is the body governing the employment, termination, salary wages of employees. When conflict arise, they can assist on the matter, and this matter can be handled uh, professionally referring to the guidelines from the governing body, which is the National Employment Council in the agricultural sector. Now, we have discussed the aspects and what's involved with the human resource function. Now, assessing the state of human resource function in your business. Think of the human resource function of your business. Think of you as the employer. How do you handle the human resource functions? Do you properly follow the guidelines stated and as required by the person who handles the human resource management, which can be you as the business owner? How about the importance of each employee being bound within a working contract? Do you just hire any employee and fire them at any time? Do you sign binding contracts with your employee that stipulates and clearly indicates what expected from the employees? I'm going to share with you a case study, two examples, that shows the importance of having employees being bound with a uh, working contract. This will be shared on the portal. You can download it and go through it anytime. Meditate on it and see the importance of having employees being bound with a working contract. And also, as the business owner, assess the state of the HR function of your business. See where you need to improve. Highlight it. Make it a goal to improve all those functions. This is only for the benefit of your own business. Secondly, let us introduce the second topic, which is staffing. In this section, we want to understand appreciate and appreciate contracting and need to maintain employee records. We need to appreciate the need to plan and focus any labor requirements and also understand how to account for family members' contributions to operations. Most of us, we have family members that work with us. How to account for them? How do we handle the matter as they are family members working for us? Test your current knowledge. Firstly, how do you understand the process of staffing in your organization? Is there a certain process that you follow to hire any staff members? Do you understand the importance of planning in labor in relation to the workload? Do you understand the business needs before recruiting? Please rate yourself according to your level of understanding as indicated in the box. What is the staffing process? It details a few uh, processes that are involved. Firstly, manpower planning. This is the measurement of labor force required in the organization. It talks to also evaluating, developing the required, and if developing the required talent and sourcing for the required skills by the business at any given time. As, that, as stated earlier, we might be planning a big project. We might be expanding the land under cultivation. We might be expanding our market. That always calls for added human power in the business. How do you plan for manpower? 
Secondly, recruitment. After identifying any needs in your organization, after you've planned for manpower, the process of searching for prospective employees is initiated and this can result to greater productivity of the business operations. Now, after identifying manpower uh, that's required in the business, you don't sit back and say that's an expense or that's an added expense. Why? Because you've realized there is a need uh, for more manpower in the business. Now, this is where we identify the skills that we need. What type of skills am I looking at? Am I looking for a tractor driver? And am I looking for more general workers? Am I looking for someone who's more versed in certain uh, uh, work that, I'm, uh, um, that we'll do at the farm or the certain project that we're about to embark on? This is where the recruitment process uh, kicks in. This is where we evaluate the type of skills that we need. Now, thirdly, selection. This is where the business owner determines, or the HR manager, perhaps both of them, they determine the person or if the person is suitable for the applied position. The main aim is to choose the right candidate for the right position. Placement. This is the introduction of the new staff member to the organization. Job specifications and only key performance indicators are highlighted. Now, we have planned for the manpower. We've done the recruitment, the recruitment process. We understand the skills that we need. We've selected uh, uh, according to, 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 to um, the skills that we want. Now we're placing the person on the job. This is where we introduce them to the organization. This is where you introduce them to the rest of staff members. They understand their job specification. They understand the key performance indicators. What exactly is expected from them. Well, training is involved. Either they're well experienced on the work or they have no experience on the work, but they are qualified on the work. Training is always of paramount importance. They need to understand the culture of our organization. They need to understand the processes of our organization. If they have the experience which they can add on, then they can come in with that. But we need to introduce them to the processes of the organization. Any required training is offered to the new employee so they can understand better the job functions and what's expected from them. Develop is included. Development is included. As the new employee progresses in the company, as they progress, good progress will open doors for promotion and trust that employee with more duties if they show the capability of being an asset of their business. Promotion can be offered to the employee in view of the current commitment that also stimulates the zeal of the employee to work and to work harder uh, in the company as they can see that their efforts are noticed. Now, this is the staffing process that's involved within an HR organization or within the HR process. Now, one of the most important aspects is the employee records. Each and every employee record is of fundamental importance. This is information pertaining to, uh, to the employee's past employment, the present employment, past job titles, any training which they've attended, performance reviews if there are any, how much experience do they have on the job, any disciplinary actions that have been taken against the employee. All these records, if they're available, we need to keep them in the business. We need to ensure that we maintain such record. This, because they assist the business owner to understand the level of competency of the employee. They also help the business owner understand what sort of training does any of the employees need. Do they need technical training? Do they need more understanding on the technical aspects of the farm or technical aspects of the business? This is where we come in. The employee records give us such information with regards to training and ensuring all staff members are equipped, skilled, 
and ready to take on any work in the company. Now, what is the importance of train of our employee records? Firstly, Monitor the performance of the organizational employees and identify any training that's required by the employee. To easily self-guide and maintain the health and safety of the employees. To easily track and manage time work by the employees, especially part-time as well as shift workers, if we have any shift uh, shifts in our, uh, our businesses. To ensure time is accounted for and can be tracked using work done. These records, they minimize disputes between employer and employee, especially when it comes to wages. Bear in mind, according to the law of, the, of Zimbabwe, all these records should be kept for existing employees and old employees for a period of at least three years. Whether the employees left the business or they are still there, it should be kept for at least three years. Bear that in mind. Now, let's look into employment planning. This is the process of deciding what positions in the farm or in your business needs to be filled and how to fill these positions. The initiative of the organization is to expand, is to expand or maybe the, there are plans to enter new businesses, increase land under utilization, or also reduce cost of or or, or the type of organization that um, the business to fill. The, the question is to fill projected openings from within or from outside the organization. What we're trying to say is, should you plan to fill them with current employees or by recruiting from outside? If you looked into the existing staff members, do they have the skills that you need? Are there any promotions that you can offer them? This is where our planning comes in. Each option produces its own set of HR plans. Because current employees may require training and development before they are ready to fill the new jobs. Going outside requires deciding what recruiting uh, sources to use, again, in order to get skilled members. Now, these are the two factors to consider when uh, planning for employees. Demand for your product or your service. How's the demand? Do I need to increase or decrease my staff members? What are the plans of the business in the next year to the next three to five years? Are there any big projects that the company is embarking on, that the firm or the organization is embarking on that will assist on employment planning? How about with the regards to seasonal farming. A feature of agricultural activity is seasonality due to the particularities of product production. In agriculture, the demand for labor depends on the time or year and the weather conditions. To avoid any conflict with employees, proper planning and written down agreement needs to be made. If your farm produces uh, seasonally, in the other months, there is limited number of workers required. All the informa information has to be discussed with the employee. Perhaps the limited, I mean, the other months will have limited working con uh, working time. And that will also reduce the amount of money earned by that employee. All that has to be highlighted during uh, the introduction of the new employee in the company. Proper planning is required to be done in order to maintain the business cash flow positive. Factors to consider when planning for staff. Think of your business. Think of your farm. Is my produce all year round? How many staff members are required during the production season? How many staff members does the farm need during the harvesting in order for the business to be competent. And during the season where there is no activity at the farm, what else can the business do to keep uh, uh, to, to keep its employees? Are we going to diversify our service offering and utilize our employees 
on other service offering which the business is now offering. These are some of the things that we should uh, consider when planning for staff. We might also think of internal and external sources for candidates. We indicated you might think of taking internal candidates within the organization. Utilize them. Promote them before you even bring out the skill from external sources. That will also make the employee realize that they are valued within the organization and their efforts is not just in vain. This was this is what this was our first section of our human resource module. Remember the staffing process and the importance of planning for any required skills. Recruit and select the right candidate. Train and develop and promote the existing candidates. How about the importance of keeping employee records? Think of your business. Do you have any record of your employees? How many employees do you have now? Do you have their information in case of any accident happened? Do you have any information? Do you have their past employee records, if any? Do you, have any, do you know any training which they've um, undertaken? Perhaps they've undertaken some training which the business uh, might need the skills for uh, during its operations. All those records, you should keep them should have them as the business owner. Plan for employees with your operations in mind. Make sure your employees understand the operations and what is right if your output and sales are seasonal. We might not be um, uh, operating or producing all year round. We might be operating seasonal. And there are certain months which are most busy and which require more staff members at our farm or at our business. We should plan accordingly. And during the planning phase, all the employees should understand what's expected for them and what's going to happen for them during the period when the farm is not busy. Are we also considering diversifying our service offering? That also affects the planning of our employees. If perhaps during that course of the year when the farm is not busy we might utilize the employees because we are diversifying into other service for uh, offering which the farm is engaging on in order to generate more revenue understand the importance of developing existing employees maybe they have the skills required by the business only can you understand and know this information if you have each and every record of your employees. So we see it is very important to have, understand the process of the HR uh, management, understand what's expected of you as the HR manager or is the business owner playing the role of the HR manager. So understand the processes of planning and recruiting new staff members. Well, this is the end of our first uh, session of our Human Resources module. Our next session will talk into compensation and benefits, the importance of training and development, and the legislative compliance. For now, we are going to have a question and answer as well as a discussion section. Um, and do not forget to raise your hands and wait for others to finish speaking before we start speaking. Until next time. Thank you.